The Pope, in an attempt to silence the growing chorus of disapproval over Pope Doms, went on Italian state television and declared that any Catholic who found themselves in disagreement with his ruling on birth control should pray to God for enlightenment and not express their opinions until such enlightenment had taken place. Do not forget, my children, that I, His Holiness, the Pope, am far wiser and closer to God than you. Remember that the Church is smarter than you are. Do not follow your own opinions. Follow mine. Mine are right. That is really the long and the short of it. The Pope then crossed himself and walked off camera. It was a brave performance. The Pope had looked like authority itself with his white cassock and his I put my money where my metaphysics are badge. It was, though, not enough to stop the growing opposition to human IV tie 2 within the Church. On the 25th of September, the day after the exaltation of the Holy Cross, Cardinal Phillips, with the backing of a slim majority of cardinals, declared Pope John John insane and denounced his papacy. Promptly after this announcement was made, the rebel cardinals elected Cardinal Phillips as the new Pope. One of Phillips' first acts as Pope was to forbid the use of Pope Doms, the result of which was that half of Christendom didn't know if they were coming or going. Chapter 43 Pope John John reacted to the election of Cardinal Phillips as Pope by excommunicating him and his rebel cardinals and releasing new family-sized packets of Pope Doms onto the market. Thus began the second great schism of the Roman Catholic Church. It was the first really significant schism in the Church in over 600 years, and Edgar Malroy, who referred to it as the Great Cleavage because it involved two massive tits, loved every minute of it. The proof of design argument that I turned to next had a great deal of appeal, for it merely extrapolated the conditions I found myself in to the rest of the world. If the proof was correct, man was little more than a supermarket trolley in God's great and vaulted universe, open 24 hours a day. Was the proof of design argument the hidden rationale a uh, hidden rational foundation of my belief in God. I thought at first that it was, but climbing along uh, what was known as Ge uh, the Geneva Spur, I began to wonder, for was God the only possible logical explanation of non-human order in the world, as the proof argued? Evolution could explain the order found in the living world without the need of a God of any kind, nor was it a mere toss-up between God and random chance. David Hume, in his work Dialogues Concerning Natural Religion, first published three years after his death in 1779, had suggested, among other things, that the world might be a sort of giant cabbage and the order we perceive in it uh, a product of this vegetable nature. He also suggested that the order we saw might easily be the work of more than one godlike figure, or perhaps the world was part of the web of a creature Hume calls the infinite spider. Edgar Malroy said once, in one of our heated discussions on God, that Hume had even suggested in the dialogues that the universe was a complete pile of shit. Hume had not exactly said that. What he said was, <clears throat> Why an orderly system may not be spun from the belly as well as from the brain, it will be difficult for him, the theologian, to give a satisfactory reason. Dialogues, part 7. Edgar Malroy said once that it was possible that the universe was shaped like a vagina. There were, it seemed, an infinite number of possible explanations for the order in the world. To simply pick the explanation that employs a creator god seemed unreasonable, for why was that explanation, that hypothesis, more likely than any other? Even if a creator god explanation was the only logical possible uh, explanation of the order in the world, which it wasn't, it would be next to useless anyway, for what could it tell us about God? And it was pretty impossible to tell very much at all about God, looking at the shape of the uh, shape the world was in. Certainly one could not conclude, looking at a fossil of a fish, that God wished us to worship on a Sunday, or to cover our heads at all times, or not to kill cows, or to pray five times a day, or whatever. Edgar Malroy told me, some time before I began climbing Everest, it was possible to infer, looking around at God's supposed handiwork, 
that he was not good in the normal sense of the word, that he was not caring in the normal sense of the word. Edgar then told me that there were only so many possibilities. Either God was lazy, or far less powerful than we thought, or he was equipped with a very sick sense of humour, or he was mad, or he was following some ridiculously alien moral system, which we cannot, of course, comprehend. According to Edgar, any one of these possibilities was undesirable. This had been roughly one of Edgar Malroy's arguments against the existence of God. There couldn't be a God, because it would be so horribly sick if there was. I went on pushing myself up Everest, my spiritual crisis getting worse with every passing day. Another, be another betting shop was opened just outside the walls of the Eastern Orthodox Monastery of Saint of, of um, Mount Athos in Greece. And thousands of Buddhist pilgrims went uh, in northern China, queued up the face of Mount Wu, of Mount Wu Tai, to place bets at the shop set up on the top of the sacred mountain. On the 26th of September, 2023, Skepticism Inc. distributed a total of two million tons of surplus food to the needy opened new hospitals in Sierra Leone, Guinea, Afghanistan, Malay and Togo. Uh, sorry, Malay and Togo. Uh, paid for another 600 eye operations, helped fund irrigation programs in Morocco, Pakistan, Oman and Switzerland and Swaziland. It dropped another 50 prefabricated schools in remote parts of uh, Lesotho, paid for the upkeep of tens of thousands of refugees, donated a total of £33 million to major charities and immunised another 30,000 children against the seven most common childhood diseases. It was also on the 26th that Sophia Alderson made her appearance on the television programme Today Talk. She talked about God and sin and looked as beautiful as all of George Mills Jr.'s wives put together. She really did. She said that nuclear power was safer than sex. She said that fossils were fake and that Darwin had been a fool. She said that evolution was the dumbest thing she had ever heard of, with the possible exception of metaphysical betting. <laughs>